Welcome back to the Imaginary Gallery. It's TJ, your host. Tonight is some narcissist trash talk. This information, as stated before, applies to the Cluster B personality disorders, which include psychopath, sociopath, borderline, and so on. I'll be covering a listing of some of the things these creatures say, so if you're involved with such a person who says things similar to this, it can serve as a red flag to you, so you know that you need to look out for the signs of this toxic disorder. It doesn't necessarily mean that this creature that you're dealing with is of the cluster be kind, but if you're concerned and you're watching this kind of video, chances are it might be wise to pay attention to the details. I've got a guest with me. This is my little hero. He wants to say hi, don't you? He doesn't like the camera. Do you? Do you want the toy? Toy? These statements I'll be revealing occurred throughout a very large spectrum of years. So some of these might sound obvious to you today, but they didn't to me because I was just a young'un back then. One particularly unpleasant memory comes from when I was a college student living on my own for the first time and came across this creature that I thought was a perfect specimen. We began a regular thing. I thought it was perfect. I lived in my little apartment, which was just a few blocks down from where this creature lived, in its house that it owned, and we would see each other several times throughout the week. And eventually, this creature said, hey, I think we should go on a trip together to a different city a few hours away. I was thinking, well, great, this sounds like a wonderful thing. So I said, sure. The day of the actual trip, I drove over to the creature's home, had my suitcase packed, and was planning on having a grand old time until this creature, who, bear in mind, I'm a part-time working student. This is a business owner, adult, prior to our leaving for the trip. This creature brought up a subject I'd never heard before from it. Said something like, You know, I might need to borrow a hundred dollars from you. I was just thinking it was weird because, again, the established adult, and here I am, just a college student, and this creature's asking me for a hundred dollars. And I didn't say yes, I didn't say no. I just listened to it and thought what I just said, and I responded in a way like, what? You're asking me for money? You're a business owner? You're asking me for money? I just thought it was crazy because I wasn't made of money. I was poor. The creature's response to this was basically taking it as if I was saying in oh, which I hadn't. I was just questioning it. I had never thought of such a thing, didn't anticipate it, and possibly could have done it, but didn't get that far. So instead of a pleasant afternoon, this creature then changed. It shape-shifted into a creature and said something like, I don't want to go on this trip. Not with you. I was young then and really liked the person I thought. Hadn't had an instance like this before. I was kind of shocked hearing it because remember, I didn't say no. My face just sunk. It was mean, and then it started saying things like, If I'm going to have a boyfriend, but I need money. I think I should be able to ask for it and not have to worry about any type of reaction like you gave. And Again, still seemed inappropriate or out of place and strange. But this went on for a while, and I was thinking, Okay, well, I guess I'm not going on the trip. And evidently that was all a ruse, because like uh, an hour later, it's like, I'm sorry that I said that. I still want to go with you on this vacation. And so I felt relief for the short term. But that was kind of a symptom that I'm dealing with a creature of some kind. Back then, I didn't know any of these labels. I didn't know about Cluster B. The only thing I knew about psychopath was, oh, Michael Myers in Halloween. That's a psychopath. I don't know anybody like that. So it didn't even register that I could be dealing with that type of creature in real life. Because that's the movies. It's over-dramatized. It's not necessarily realistic. That should have served as a red flag that anybody could even think to act that way considering the circumstances involved. I mean, it could have had a more adult-like conversation, but this was a creature that was 9 or 10 years older than I was, yet clearly was still an infant emotionally. This same creature I encountered on another occasion. The person couldn't read very well. A piece of mail came and it was looking at it. I was in the home with it, relaxing, watching television, and it was staring at the paper. Well, I said something to it some kind of question, and I got a reaction, something on the order of, I don't care about what you had to say. When I'm reading this, I don't care what anyone has to say. And that just cut right through, and I was thinking, what? 
If you're reading something, fine. If you're busy, just say, oh, hold on, I'm concentrating on them. That type of statement, I don't care what anyone has to say, it just seems so wrong. Of course, this did turn out to be one of these toxic cluster B creatures. It's difficult when you're a young person and you are so severely attracted to this other one and everything's been great so far and then all of a sudden these things happen and you're wanting to hold on to the great parts that you've already experienced and don't want this to interfere and you're shocked thinking, what's going on? What have I done? Oh, and we want to think we're to blame, but... With this type of thing, no, it's not our blame to take. Another one used the pity play when it was caught in lies. It had used that line. Oh, I don't usually tell people this when I first meet, but I was abused as a child. When caught in an inconsistency today, like, uh, you said this yesterday, but you're doing that today. What's the... I don't think we should hang out. Oh, well... I was abused as a child. And you're supposed to feel sorry for it and think, oh, well, in that case, you've got a free pass to do anything abusive that you want and lie all you want. Oh, sure, oh, come and come here. But no, that's what it tries to imply. During its discussion of this, which was very superficial, there was a statement made, My sibling did it to me, and I found out that my sibling was being raped by the neighbor down the street. I've heard that if someone is raped, their chances are very high that they're going to rape someone else, and that's what I was. I was raped by my own sibling. My intuition, or ESP, or whatever we want to call it, was shouting, lies, wrong, fake, as I heard this, because it did not sound genuine. But I was listening very carefully to what it said. I think it was at a later occasion I brought this up, and I would said, you know, you said you were abused by your sibling, and the reason your sibling did that to you is because it was abused by someone else, and you say that people who are abused tend to abuse others. So, if you were abused by this sibling, who did you abuse? Sounds like a logical question. Probably wasn't anticipated. That's when I heard another red flag, an answer, something on the order of, I don't know, probably every single one of my ex-boyfriends. It was just said like that, that it never admitted to. It was just a shock, and that's a red flag. Dealing with a monster, because it's admitting. Despite all its previous stories of, Oh, all my exes cheated on me. Oh, I've just been so abused. Now we hear the tables turn, and it's, I abuse all my exes. Ridiculous. Another one did the usual stages, the idealization phase, love bombing, which goes into the devalue, and then the discard. I had no idea that existed, and I was involved with one who had done the love bombing, and it felt great. It always does, especially if you're a naive person that's never encountered such a thing, even from your own family. Nobody that friendly. Well, after a while, this creature began to do the devaluing. After it had me in its clutches, and after I'd given up sufficient things where I was pretty much tied to it, it started to turn cruel. I hadn't seen that before, and typically when we meet a person and we are with them, let's say, 20 times, and they're consistently a certain way, 20 times, you figure, okay, well, I can establish that that's how this person is. And then they pull a fast one and do this crap and start being evil. I would be very lucid in the situation, and I'd say something like, wait. That was abusive, what you just said. Why are you saying these hateful things? Instead of accepting, Oh my goodness, I was really nice every day up until now, and now I'm being mean. Oh, they didn't address that. Instead, it was, Will you cause it? You cause it. <laughs> and I thought, this is a joke. That just bit is a wrong statement. I didn't cause anything. I'd start saying my usual, I can't control how you choose to behave and what your vocal cords decide to say. That's up to you. I don't have any strings I pull that make you do anything. These are the creatures that, of course, don't take accountability for anything. So if they are an angel for months and then turn evil, well, it's your fault. It's someone else's fault. <laughs> and that's the way these creatures work. Just for your information, no, if you've heard that line, you didn't cause anything. It's common to sit these people down if you're at least like I am. And I would be like, look, let's have a discussion here. You're saying I caused this. Well, and I would like literally spell it all out to say that each person is an individual. They make the decisions based on their experiences and they say what they choose to say. There's like a brain inside. Let's say they want to call a bad name or do something horrific. Their brain is going to say, do you really want to say that to someone else? Maybe you shouldn't and they'll stop themselves. But these creatures don't. They will just do what they do and then say, well, you caused it. <laughs> and I was like, sorry, I didn't.
I can't control your vocal cords. And of course, they hate that kind of talk, I've learned, because there's something on your end that needs fixing, and they don't want to fix anything. They just want to keep on going and make everything else adapt to them, which doesn't prove to be very effective in the long run. Another one revealed a very important fact with these creatures. I was involved with one not even that seriously, but I could tell there was a lot of corruption in it, and I would attempt to straighten out my own reality by clarifying when it would make lies up. I'd say, look, that's not the way things are, and so on. I could use intuition and figure this person's words are in a 100% contradiction of their actions. Intuition was telling me as well that this person doesn't feel this way when it was saying certain statements. I started to figure out what it was, and I would text it. I would send these rage-filled texts kind of angry because I was saying in the beginning I didn't want to get close to anybody because of my experience and then this one was like oh I just like you and wanted to hang around a lot and I was already saying look keep your distance and it was saying oh I'm different from everyone else but then it was getting caught doing these horrific things and I would piece together what it's really like and I'd send these messages saying you know what you don't really care who it is you're with as long as you have a person there with you obviously from your experience and what I've seen you don't care who it is you just want it there and if someone asks you to go to a bed room you're gonna go you don't care who they are because I would see different examples of the creatures that it dragged into its bed even just one time and I'd think who would ever even do that with that but that's the way it was so I would start to figure it out and piece it together and obviously what I said was true but not once did it ever acknowledge it and say oh yes I guess you're right no it was just fighting back and saying what about you did this so on the key line it gave was well at least you're still talking to me so that's a good thing what does that reveal to you? I didn't know at the time, but now I do. That means this creature knows it's not worthy of anybody's attention. It knows that the only way it can get it is by faking it, which it's doing with you. And in typical situations, it's probably common that the person they're working on is wise to them, sees the red flags and ditches them, but they're saying that you, like me, well, you're still talking to me, which means in their twisted mind, even if every word I said was true and pointed out some horrific flaws, this creature thinks in its mind, well, I'm winning. I still have this person's attention. It's still talking to me. So keep that in mind if you're involved with such a creature. Ask yourself, are you enabling this person by continuing to hang around? Because many times we will because of something they did in the idealization love bombing that caught our attention and made us think, well, we don't want to lose this one. If we have a conflict, we're going to solve it and work it out. But <laughs> unfortunately, with these creatures, that's not an option. And one last example was one that I'd seen on a regular basis had lots of fun in the sack with, but that was pretty much it that it could do. It couldn't really be emotionally connected. It couldn't empathize. It couldn't show any kind of remorse or acknowledgement of my own beliefs and feelings and experiences. But when it was all over, but there was still like the post-discard contact, which is not advisable, it would say things like, I was miserable during all those years we were together. And I'd say, well, if you were miserable, why did you bring flowers and say, oh, I love you more every day? And I heard, I lied. I think, well, then who are you blaming for that? If you're leading me on that everything's great, and you're miserable secretly, well, pff, what can I do about that? How am I to know that these creatures think everyone else is responsible for their feelings, which don't exist, their pretend feelings? But I asked, well, why did you keep seeing me every single week if you were so miserable? And the response was very telling. Because it was fun in one particular way, the answer was, I wasn't going to give up on a sure thing. <laughs> <laughs> So I was a sure thing, so in order to maintain that sure thing, it just had to pretend to be a partner, or a worthy partner, which is fraud. <laughs> Thinking back now, hearing those words live as they're spoken, they're pretty shocking and telling, but uh, at this point, I'd been through so much with this creature, I was pretty much numb to it all. Be on the lookout for such statements and such behaviors, because if you're involved with one of these creatures, it's a dead end no matter how pretty they make it look at the beginning. So do yourself a favor and get out if you can. Hell yes, I'm a narcopath. The only one you ever think of. I've been listening to TJ's videos once again. He covered one on bullying and he's wanting me to admit to you how I bullied you, which I don't think I did. TJ told me the ways that could be seen as bullying. Mainly when we go out together in public and men from all over the place would always come up to me, smile at me, wink at me, talk to me privately when I went to the ladies' room. You were always skeptical, wondering, Who's that? Who's that? I would just tell you, I don't know someone who just likes the way I look. 
<laughs> you should be proud you're with such a beautiful lady. I know that one of your friends happened to notice one of the guys that was talking to you. She kind of spilled the beans because I told you that I had to go to a long meeting the next day for a job I was going to get, which didn't really exist. In fact, she happened to listen to a message that I left said that I could get out of the house because I was going to pretend to go to a meeting. She knew who it was. It was me. She told you. I was not going to admit to that, even though it was obvious. Until that happened, I swore to you every day you were just being paranoid. You're just insecure. Just accept the fact I'm with you. I don't know these other people. You were supposed to buy it. The problem is you didn't buy it. Then the proof came along. Until then, TJ says I was bullying you because you kept bringing it up. You kept talking about the specific words that so-and-so overheard, and, and I would just keep telling you that you're wrong. And That's gossip. Don't listen to gossip. That doesn't mean anything. You accused me of lying. And I pretended like that was such a horrible thing, thinking I'm lying. Oh, and I pretended to cry, and of course I couldn't, because I ain't no crisis actor. So that's how I bullied you, because you were on to me. But I didn't let you have that. I told you, no, you're wrong, you're ridiculous, you're crazy, you're a conspiracy bearer. But the fact was, all along, you knew what I was doing. But I was bullying you, evidently, by telling you how wrong you were. Even taking it further to say, I'm going to go to a therapist and tell her how my lover accuses me of lying, which I never lie, ever. I took it all the way. I know afterward, when the truth came out, I just dropped the subject, like, so what? Whatever. You couldn't understand how I could just drop it after all that fighting. Well, honey. I was fighting because I was lying. You didn't need to know the truth. Once you figure out my lie, it's no longer fun anymore. I'll just stop the game. I'm not going to admit to be. I just pretend like it never existed. Because I'm always right. The narcopath is never wrong. So even if you argue and you've got the right information that's true, well, tough. I'm going to say that you're wrong, and that's going to let me win the argument. Understand? Good. <laughs> Once I dumped you, I was motivated by a song, which I'm going to perform for you today. No, it's not a dramatic reading. It's going to be a song. Tomorrow 